Hi guys. Well, I'm going to be leading you through events. However, <laughs> as of September the 9th, this article written by one father, uh, rather brother, Alexis Bagnolo, I'm going to coordinate it with what we know and the events as they unfolded in 2013. So bear with me and remember that the link for Vatican III, the document Yah presented to Benedict and the apostolic letter that he wrote in March of 2013 announcing to the world that the Christ is indeed back in Yahweh Jesus, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Uh, I want you to just to get very excited and add fuel to the fire by uh, contacting Brother Alexis Bugnolo and alerting people to what Yahweh has been saying from the beginning. Benedict is still the Pope because he, Yahweh, did not accept his resignation. That was the content of the communications with Benedict. So let's take a look at what uh, Alexis Bognolo is saying. The Vatican has now accepted that Bergola, Bergoglio is an anti-pope. Rome, September 9th. Now we are recording this on 9-11, September the 11th, Australian time, 2019, from Tugum, the home of the Christ in Australia. The Vatican has conceded that Jorg Mario Bergoglio is an anti-pope. The concession came tacitly as of Saturday when, after 90 days since the publication of the news that Pope Benedict had accepted the arguments which demonstrated his resignation was invalid, the Vatican took no action to discount the report. The report was public knowledge at Rome, since it was four times accessed by computers at the Vatican, some of which were in the offices of the Secretary of State. In response, that office requested the Corriere della Sera to interview Pope Benedict in an attempt to get him to withdraw his tacit acceptance with the admission on his part that the Pope is one he is Francis. The interview, having failed to extract those words from Benedict during an exchange of photographs in the Vatican Gardens in the third week of June, or thereabouts. The interview never gave a time or place which was specific. The Vatican Press Office put out a teaser the day before its publication in the Marxist newspaper claiming Benedict had said those words. Very Catholici, the International Association, discounted the report on Friday after acquiring a copy of the Carriere della Sera's actual printed interview, as reported here, Life Site News, which initially reported the false assertions of the Vatican Press Office, took back the claim a week later in a full article on July the 4th, 2019. Very Catholic also publicly asked LifeSite News to investigate the why of it. As of today, they have failed to follow through. The Corriere della Sera subsequently published the interview and see online here. Eventually, Antonio Sochi on July the 1st remarked the occurrence of the publicity debacle for the Vatican as another gross fake news story. But the import of the event was ignored, namely that the Vatican was attempting to discount the report by From Rome of the tacit acceptance. To which I say, is everyone brain dead at Rome? Can you not put on your thinking cap and do some reasoning like this. 
The Vatican Press Agency risks its entire reputation by making a false claim about what Benedict had said. Corriere della Sera was asked by the Vatican Secretary of State to attempt to extract such a statement from Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict refused to make such a statement. Pope Benedict had thus publicly reaffirmed he would not discount the assertion of the From Rome blogger. Therefore, Benedict is aware his resignation was not canonically valid. Therefore, Benedict is aware that he is still the only true Pope and Vicar of Christ. And with that, I'll say hello from the get-go in their communications. Yahweh, I do not accept your resignation. You are still the Pope. This writer says, now that 92 days have passed, the Vatican, not having discounted anything of the above, has conceded that Bergoglio is not the Pope, but at the same time allow him to keep pretending to be the Pope. But a pretender to the throne of St. Peter is an anti-Pope. Therefore, the Vatican has conceded that Bergoglio is an anti-Pope. By the way, for the record, the Vatican Secretary of State had already conceded that Benedict is the Pope, and see the report here. And the Vatican has known the resignation was invalid since March 2013, when they tried to cover it up, and see the report here, for the complete canonical demonstration of the invalidity of Pope Benedict's resignation, see, and we'll go there. For the love of Jesus Christ, therefore, please spread the news to the whole Catholic world. Well, we have been <laughs> since uh, March of 2013. Let's uh, take a look at these reports where they say, click here. Let's see what this one opens up as. This one is Pope Benedict has tacitly accepted that his resignation was canonically invalid. This is from the 9th of June. And uh, so Brother Bugnola says on the 30th of January 2019, Pope Benedict received at the Vatican through the hands of Archbishop Gail Ganswain the canonical brief I sent him demonstrating conclusively that the act contained in the declaration non solemn propter of February 11, 2013 was not in conformity with the term of Canon 332, Section 2, which requires the renunciation of munis for a valid papal resignation, and that therefore he remains the sole valid Roman pontiff. In my letter to the Archbishop, I indicated how the Holy Father could contact me in response to the brief. 160 days have passed without any objection to the arguments presented. According to the norms of the Vatican itself, if no objection is made, to a canonical assertion after 90 days, tacit consent is indicated. And here is proof of the delivery via FedEx shipping slip. Let's take a look at the shipping slip. Right, here is the history. from Westminster, Massachusetts, the USA, to the city del Vaticano, Italy. So it, uh, let's see if we can, yeah, delivered. 12.02 p.m. on uh, the 30th of January, 2019. Be interesting, I'll get you out to do the stars over the the Vatican at that time. 
see what it has to say. So he received it. Let's go back and look at what else. Here is uh, the text which I sent in PDF. Uh, state of the question. Recently the noted Vatican theologian and former member of the Congregation for Faith, Monsignor Nicola Bux, publicly opined that the validity of the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI should be studied in regard to the question of what appears to be substantial error in the formula of resignation. So this is uh, what was sent and received by Um, Pope Benedict through Gail Gan Swain. Right. Now, the point of it all is that he resigned as the active ministry but not the office. Um, <coughs> let's go back to the article. Let's see here, the interview. Benedict. So this was an interview where the Vatican sent in somebody who attempted to get uh, Benedict to say that uh, Francis is the one true Pope when he was unsuccessful. Benedict did not say those words and that was the purpose for the interview. Now, Andrea Anna sent around a um, photograph through Facebook and it was about that time, um, uh, it was several months ago, may have been at this photographic opportunity, where Benedict was clearly making the sign of an M using his uh, both hands, the fingers from both hands, forming the shape of an M. A very awkward thing to do the way he had his fingers and it was speculated at the time that he was indeed indicating M for Marshall what else do we have here the imprisonment of Pope Benedict this is from July the 8th and a bit of a timeline here and this is where I want to uh, leave over to our own video uploads through this timeline. I'll read this in fullness. I will summarise in this article the suppositions and analysis which the volunteers and members of Very Catholici have worked out in recent days about what really went on in the Vatican 2012 to 13. I will do so in a timeline which makes understanding what was going on easier. This will be a recitation of facts with an interpretation which explains them elegantly. Now, at the same time, I'll take us over to what was really going on that this man does not know about. In March 2012, Pope Benedict XVI established a commission of cardinals to investigate leaks of reserved and confidential documents on television, in newspapers, and in other communications, media, in what is known as the Vatileaks scandal. It first met on Tuesday, April 24, 2012. Cardinal Harantz served as the chair and was accompanied by Cardinals Joseph Tomko and Salvatore Di Giorgi. And then in the fall of that year, someone leaks the results of the Vatican Commission on gays in the Vatican to Team Bergoglio. So you've got to remember in context, Benedict is still publicly the Pope. This is all leading up to 2013 when the conclave does elect Bergoglio. So now we've got Team Bergoglio operating behind the scenes a year before the conclave would be held. And this is totally uh, illegal according to the tradition of how popes are elected. There are to be no campaigning like a, 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 you know, the US elections, etc. Um, someone links the, which in response brings feverish activity at Rome. And this activity aims for the forced abdication of Benedict. Then in early November, the coup d'etat is hatched. Team Bergoglio demands the resignation of Pope Benedict, 
to prevent the revelations of the dossier to be presented by Vatican Commission on gays in the Vatican. The contents of the dossier will implicate all the key members of Team Bergoglio and thus all force and expediency must be employed to stop its publication. The conspiracy includes not only Team Bergoglio, but all named in the dossier, the names of whom are given to Team Bergoglio by someone working in the com commission. So there was a traitor within the commission. The terms of the coup d'etat are as follows. Pope Benedict will resign. Pope Benedict will not publish the contents of the dossier. Pope Benedict will continuously testify that he resigned willingly. If Pope Benedict refuses, Team Bergoglio threatens the Pope with assassination, citing the published testimony of an Italian journalist on February 11, 2012, saying that the assassination will be within one year. The date, February 11, 2013, is chosen for the resignation to signal to the lavender mafia around the world that the abdication has been forced precisely to defend their evil institution. Pope Benedict, taking counsel from no one because he trusted no one, decides to go along but to leave telltale signs for the Catholic world so that any intelligent observer will discern what is going on. He extracts the condition of the promotion of his personal secretary to the position of the pontifical household, believing this will keep him safe and to signify that after his resignation, he is still the only one true Pope. November 23rd, James Michael Cardinal Harvey, who had been the prefect of the papal household under Benedict, is named Cardinal Priest of St. Paul outside the walls in an apparent reward for his role in allowing Benedict to be betrayed in the Vatican leak scandal and to make way for Ganswain. December the 7th, Father Gael Ganswain, the private secretary of Pope Benedict from the time he was a cardinal, is named prefect of the papal household. Then December the 17th, the Pope received a report on Vatican lobbies prepared by Cardinal Sarantz, <coughs> De Giorgi and Tomko. The same day, the Pope decided to resign. This decision is forced and is Benedict's sign to Team Bergoglio that he has accepted the terms given in the coup d'etat. 2013, January the 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany, Father Ganswain is ordained Archbishop of Herbs Salvia. He becomes the only holder of the office of Prefect of the Papal Household to ever enjoy the dignity of an Archbishop. Another papal sign that the renunciation would be invalid and that Benedict would retain the true dignity of Pope. The choice of the titular see, Herbs Salvia, which was a centre of the imperial cult of Augustus, Pontifex Maximus, is another sign to the Catholic world that Benedict's resignation would be invalid, as the prefect will care for the Pontifex Maximus. And in brackets, that Bergoglio does not have an officer of the papal household caring for him is another sign he is not Pope. February the 11th, 2013, you will all remember this being the day of the lightning strike. Twice at 5.55pm after Benedict had announced his retirement. Pope Benedict XVI, his capacity as Bishop of Rome and successor of St. Peter, renounces the ministry which he received at the hands of the cardinals and calls for a conclave to elect a new supreme pontiff. The alternate use of title successor of St. Peter for himself and supreme pontiff for the one who would follow him is another sign to the Catholic world of the coup d'etat and forced resignation. But in his act of resignation, in resigning the ministerium, not the munis, he makes his resignation canonically invalid and sends a big canonical message to the church warning them of what is going on. He also includes several errors in Latin in the text as written and as spoken to show that he's being coerced 
and not acted freely. Upon Benedict's finishing the reading of Non Solum Propter, Cardinal Sadano, a chief conspirator in the coup d'etat, stands up and shouts, This takes us as a surprise, like a bolt of lightning from heaven. He then orders all in the Vatican to say nothing about what the act of Pope Benedict means, because he notices that the renunciation is of ministerium, not munis, as agreed. Not wanting to show that he is a member of the coup, he refrains from saying Benedict resigns. He orders Father Lombardi to speak with journalists and find one who thinks it means he abdicated. Having found Giovanna, Ciri Lombardi gives her to go ahead to spread the fake news. And after the journalists of the world, prepared by Team Bergoglio, make it a fact, the Vatican press office confirms the fake news in the operation. This is the Marxist tactic of using hearsay to repress truth. This hearsay is now the unquestionable dogma of the Lavender Mafia worldwide, the sign that priests, bishops and cardinals, as well as laymen, will not question it is a tangible proof of their adhesion to the coup d'etat or beguilement by it. February the 28th, Pope Benedict, alarmed that no one has understood the signs he has given, gives his final address spelling out explicitly that he has resigned the active ministry, not the munis, in a last desperate attempt to stop the forced resignation. The lack of response from any cardinal leads Benedict to believe that he has no friends among them and that they too are part of the Lavender Mafia. He flies to Castel Gandolfo, where he hopes to be rescued by Catholic forces who recognise his resignation is invalid. Now, I will say here, because it was March the 11th, 2013, so 11 days after he flew to Castel Gandolfo, he began his historic communications with Salvatore Mundi the returned Lord Jesus Christ in Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, Yahweh Jesus. However, on March the 19th, the Feast of St. Joseph, Protector of the Church, at the papal inauguration of Pope Francis, Cardinal Tomko, a member of the Commission on Gay Activity in the Vatican, was one of the six cardinals who made the public act of obedience on behalf of the College of Cardinals, to the new Pope at his papal inauguration. In an act of obvious agreement to the coup d'etat, a sign perhaps that he was the one who leaked information of the investigation to Team Bergoglio in the late summer of 2012. The date of March 19th was chosen to indicate to the Lavender Mafia that the coup had protected their evil institution. Then on March the 23rd, Bergoglio warned that Benedict's residence at Castel Gandolfo may be to escape the terms of the coup d'etat, meets with him there and orders his return to the Vatican as a prisoner. Now, here, they don't have a clue. It was March the 23rd that, that Pope Benedict told Bergoglio that he had been communicating with the return to Christ the white envelope that you saw on top of the, the white box in, in that meeting and we were sent by Gail Ganswain, a photograph taken of them. It was uh, Benedict enthusiastically telling Bergoglio that he has met the Christ, the Christ is back. Naively, Benedict thought that Francis would be as overjoyed as he was. But Francis, of course, the anti-Christ, anti-Pope, just says, he is certainly not the Christ. And then, then his uh, exclamation over being handed, the restoration of the church being Vatican III, written by Yahweh. This is what went on. And it was only later, you see, when we got to uh, Castel Gandolfo on April the 28th, we were told by a local artisan, the one who painted Yahweh's uh, uh, image, it, that was to be a gift for Benedict. It, it didn't come about, but you'll see it later as I switch over to the tab. She told us that Benedict was to be there until May the 12th. 
However, it was May the 2nd that he was flown out unexpectedly. We had already uploaded our videos, many of you will remember. Uh, we were with Andrea Anna and sitting in the courtyard of uh, Castel Gandolfo there, right outside the gates to where Benedict was being held prisoner. So they had to get him out knowing that we were in the area, the Christ was in the area. And it was uh, not, <laughs> well, it was rather hilarious, we'll read about him. On May the 2nd, we were sitting in the reception area at the Vatican. They had wanted us to remain there while they were finding out what to do with us. We'd been told we cannot see Gael Ganswain because he was accompanying Pope Benedict back from Castel Gandolfo in the helicopter to the Vatican. It was literally flying overhead at that moment when we were there and we were told to come back at five o'clock. Hello? This was after being warned not to come to Rome because uh, we'd be arrested. And this was by the thugs that warned us. The thugs hired by, by Benedict, rather hired by Francis, orchestrated by Ganswain to warn us to stay away from Rome. We go, yeah, right. No way, I say. So this is, this is what really went on. And then it goes on to events in June 2014, June the 12th, uh, Bergoglio awards Cardinal Harantz for his silence by raising him from the dignity of a cardinal deacon to that of a cardinal priest. And uh, then April 2016, Pope Benedict approves the up-and-coming talk by Archbishop Gan Swain at the Pontifical University of St. Gregory the Great, in which the Archbishop affirms that Benedict retains the Petrine Munis and Ministry as another desperate attempt to get Catholics to study the timeline of events. Bergoglio responds with force and orders them both to silence on these matters. And then 2019, February to May, Benedict, having received a canonical brief demonstrating his renunciation was invalid as regards the Petri Munis tacitly accepts it to indicate canonically that he knows he's still the Pope and politically that he is under duress not to speak. And in fine, he says, His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI remains a prisoner in the Vatican, waiting patiently that someone in the Catholic world will read this timeline and realise what it means. And I will say more than that, that somebody in the Catholic world will take seriously the events that we have been for six years now alerting the world to our people once this all went down throughout March and April and May continued and they hit thousands of venues and newsletters. This is why we went to Rome in the first place. We went to the Rome report. We went to the newspapers. We went to three different levels of local police there to tell them what had happened to Benedict. Nobody batted an eyelid. Nobody tried to lift a finger and they just, they, they, we, we were actually told it was not worth their life to even listen to what we were saying. Hello, this is the mafia that has uh, been in control. So let's go over now to what was really going, uh, uh, again, this, this man wrote, writes from the ignorance of what was going down behind the scenes with the return of the Christ. Here is, again, he's tacitly accepted. We've, we've, we've read that. Uh, no comment. Many thanks to a member who shared the Benedict interview with Very Catholici headquarters. We can now confirm that Benedict never said during the interview that there is only one Pope and he is Francis. That quote was taken from several years ago. Uh, so it means uh, that Benedict is acknowledging that he is still the Pope, which is what Yah told him. Hello, it's not because of what this man did, it's what because of Yah told him. Yah told him he is Petrus Romanus and he will return to fulfill the announcement that he made through the apostolic letter. Let's take a look now over at our channel. This is the reading of the apostolic letter, originally uploaded March the 26th in 2013. The reading of the announcement to the world the Christ is back in his person of Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, Yahweh, Jesus. Now, I'm not going to play this through. This is all 
been re-uploaded at our current channel Christ is back uh, this is his channel you can listen to it but we received from the Pope this apostolic letter we, is dedicated to and I'm hoping Martin, that there is some volume Mundi, Mrs. Oh, Asherah right, Marshall I have the spouse microphone. of Yahweh and to all of your disciples Saviour of the world and then the cover page is the right, I'll stop there and we'll go over Now this is uh, March the 30th, 2013. This is one week after the meeting with Bergoglio where uh, Benedict told him he'd been communicating with the Christ and then when he realised that he had been cut off from the world, he had nobody to call upon and indeed he was being held a prisoner this is the three-minute video that Father Giuseppe Giovello produced for him. They sent it to us through email and asked us to upload it to our YouTube channel, which at that time was Sword of Truth 888. And this is the production of it. I'll let it run. go over to another yes this this is the truth this is what it's all about <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll stop there. Uh, I'll put the links for each of these videos in the description box. But the apostolic letter is always in the description box. The box, the link to the drop box that contains the apostolic letter dedicated to Mr. Brian Lenegar Lati Marshall, Salvatore Mundi, Mrs. Ashura Marshall, spouse of Yahweh, and to all of your disciples. And then the contents of the letter. And under part three, the highlights of the meeting with His Holiness Pope Francis, and uh, then Francis's response to Mr. Brian Marshall's claim. But uh, it's an 11 page document, the most important document in all history is this particular document announcing to the world uh, the Christ returned and who his personage is this day. Pope Benedict did and is still risking his life uh, even though he's behind the walls of the Vatican but he is uh, protected by Yah's holy angels and now is the time coming down to February the 8th next year it's like the the D-Day uh, so we can continue to do our part all of us by again sending these links far and wide throughout the Muslim community and uh, Christians themselves for the most part they've become anti-Christ because they've they uh, they've become Jews that's it in a nutshell however uh, where you are led Please post this link and just know that this is what Yahweh has been saying all along. Let's go to Vatican III. This is the document, Vatican III, the 49 canons, since it's all about canon number 332, section 2, um, that uh, the brother Bugnola was writing about. Good morning, Holy Father. I have looked at Vatican II, and based on my observations, the following are my thoughts. I understand the efforts and many minds involved. So I'll keep it simple. Hello, the KISS principle. The reorganized church must reflect my intentions and is not an election. And you can see the time where it was sent to um, Pope Benedict. It was March the 13th, 2013. And it was 6.08.41 a.m. Australian time, which me and Rome is eight hours behind us. So it was still uh, 10.28 on uh, the, the 12th of March, 3.12. So before Francis walked out of the conclave in the evening, Rome time of March the 13th, Benedict had this in his hand from the Lord Jesus Christ. And 49 canons, simple uh, points, if you like, this would become the... Um, constitution of the reorganized church and benedict really appreciated it note here the torah is an abomination promoting the jews as the promised people when in fact was condemned by jesus myself then and now divorce is permissible under certain circumstances adultery cruelty oppression of freedom of thought oppression physically or domination under misguided spiritual views he addressed the priesthood Priesthood in the past has been the domain of men. However, women were essential to ethics at the time of Jesus and his ministry. There shall be no limitation on the participation of women in the church who are equally qualified and who elect to be ministers to women and children of the congregation and can preach from the pulpits to both men, women and children. And uh, it um, touches upon homosexuality and the... Uh, uh, abuse of children etc there is no there is no give for either one of them it uh, addresses everything that um, here is the mother church must rebuild telecommunication to address world and local events that are presently owned and dominated by the Zionists intent on demoralizing and desensitizing the children into a demonic possession for example, music, movies, television, radio and computer games where immorality, death and destruction covertly introduces the child into a world where demons are good and Jesus is eliminated, Jewish dominated. Judaism will not be tolerated under any pretense of freedom of religion. Our church must and will dominate and have no tolerance for any non-Jesus religion. 
rule with a rod of iron, and it talks about the first five books of the Bible, uh, diverting truth covertly by the Talmud, the Babylonian Galilean Mishnah, sin, the priesthood is an advisor, one's body is the tabernacle of God, um, the Eucharist, the cup of wine representing the blood of Christ, education of children, the Lord's Prayer, children of God will be educated by the Holy Mother in all things, and uh, dictated by Mother Mary to her son Jesus when I was a child. There will be no circumcision, no vaccinations, and uh, the Holy Ghost is the resurrected soul, Yahweh, worn as a holy garment over the flesh body of the returned soul through reincarnation into the genetic line of kings, etc., etc. With the deepest respect, Yah finishes to you, Holy Father, from Christ. And this is the statue that Benedict commissioned. So I'll leave this here, but this is uh, extremely important for all of you to just grasp what's going on right now as these uh, events unfold. And yeah, it is exciting. We're coming back with more, the continuing PowerPoint, an in-depth study into Shakespeare himself and uh, the Muslim community whom Yah finds uh, to be more Christian than Christians themselves these days.